Well, Richard Bryars co-star in The Good Life, Penelope Keith, joins us now from Surrey. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm sure it's a very sad day for you. And he was, he was the absolute definition for me of national treasure, uh, loved across generations and classes and signifying something about Britain, and you were lucky enough to know him. Indeed I was, yes, for quite a long time now. I think we started Good Life in 1974, so heavens above, it's 40 years. Um, he was a remarkable man. He was incredibly generous, uh, always very kind, very courteous, and this wonderful self-deprecation that Dickie had, but a, a joy to work with and a very, very valuable friend. His, his characters, uh, it, whether it was Tom or, or, or in other sitcoms, were, were really about men who wanted to be the leader, wanted to be the boss uh, of a group. Was he like that in real life at all? Absolutely not. No, absolutely not. Because when The Good Life first came, of course, it was a series that was, if not written for him, certainly put on because of him. He was a star. But never, ever did one, did one ever get any sense that, oh, this is my series. We were a company of actors who all got on incredibly well and had a marvellous time. The Good Life was on for a surprisingly short period of time, about three years, I think. And yet it seems to have been a massive part of sort of British popular culture for, for decades almost. I mean, can you explain why? No, I can't. I wish I could, but I can't. But it was extraordinary. It was a different time, of course, you have to remember. Things were allowed to grow. Um, no one took much notice of it for the first series. And it really wasn't until we reached series three, which I personally think was the best lot of the lot, when it really, as they say, took off. And then it's been repeated rather a lot. I mean, rather elderly people come up to me now and say, I grew up with you, um, which is fascinating. But it seems to go on and on, and indeed crosses continents, which is fascinating. And, and, and did he have the same approach, do you think, to uh, Shakespearean roles on the stage as he had to television comedy? Oh, yes. I mean, acting's about truth. Not about reality, but about truth. And I saw his Lear, which was remarkable. Terribly, terribly good. He was a wonderful actor. Just because he was so good at Tom didn't mean that that was all he could do. Um, he had an amazing career, doing an awful lot of very, very different things. I saw him in Akebourne, I saw him in Coward, when, as I, I believe it was Noel Coward said, you talk like a typewriter, dear boy. I couldn't believe, I think I was at drama school, I couldn't believe anyone could talk that fast. Um, but he was wonderful on the stage and on television. No uh, man of many, many parts. Everyone who's spoken today who worked with him said he was, you know, he was kind and he was warm and generous and, you know, he had this incredibly successful career, incredibly successful family. I mean, was he... It all sounds a bit too good to be true. Yes, it does, doesn't it? I mean, so often when people die, you hear all these wonderful things and you think, oh, it is too good to be true. But this, I assure you, is true. It was true. No one... I've never heard a bad word said about Dickie. Penelope Keith, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you.